Installing script extenders with Vortex is now so easy, you probably don't need a video showing you how to do it. However, in spite of that, I decided to update this video. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a beginner's guide to Vortex part 7. If you don't know what a script extender is, the short version is it's a special type of mod that adds new features and functionality that can be accessed by other mod makers, allowing them to make more complicated and more powerful mods. The script extenders also add their own features that don't need other mods and can help with things like performance and stability, but overall, this series of mods, the script extenders for Skyrim, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and many other BGS games, are considered essential mods. Pretty much most people modding those games on PC, I would, I would just recommend you always have the script extender. It's probably the first thing you install. One of the things that makes the Script Extender series of mods a little different is they install files in the main game folder, not just in the data folder. In fact, some of them only have files in that main folder. And traditionally, mod managers only installed files to the data folder, which meant for Script Extenders, many of the critical files you needed had to be installed by hand. But now, Vortex actually handles all that for you automatically via something called an extension. This extension comes pre-installed with the latest version of Vortex, and you can check it's enabled by going to Extensions and scrolling down until you find Script Extender Installer. Just make sure this is enabled, and you're pretty much ready to go. In fact, if you boot up Vortex for a game where a script extender is available and you don't have it installed, it will pop up a notification basically telling you that. And all you need to do is click more. It will open up a pop-up window. There, you click the button marked download. It will begin downloading and once done, install automatically. You then press enable, and if you set it to auto deploy when you enable a mod, it will basically do the rest for you. And if you double click on the script extender mod that's just been installed for you, you can now see it's got version details, and indeed the mod type has already been set correctly for you as well. All that's left to do now is start up the game and just make sure it's working. I get in game, I open up the console and type get nvse version, press enter, version 5. It's installed and it's running. And it really is that simple now. Now if you prefer to download the archive file manually before you install with Vortex, you can still do that. Just go along to the Script Extender website that is applicable to the game you're installing it for, Follow the instructions, find the latest version, and download that to wherever you need it downloaded. I've downloaded mine to my desktop. Then just drag the archive to where it says drop files on Vortex and release. It will add the script extender mod to Vortex, and then all I need to do is click where it says never installed, and it will basically go through the same process. It will install, I hit enable, it should auto-deploy, and I'm done. It really is still very simple. The only difference is I downloaded the archive file myself. Some games will have more than one version of the script extender for different versions of the game. So, for example, Skyrim has the standard version, it has the VR version, and it has the special edition version. And it is possible that you might click the wrong file. I'll show you what actually happens, because it's nothing to worry about, actually. If I open in Vortex, go along to skse silverlock.org, and I'm going to install this for Special Edition, so I'm going to choose the archive for the standard version of Skyrim. By the way, do not download the installer if you're installing for Skyrim. You always want the archive, but I'm going to choose the archive that is not correct for the game I'm installing it for, and it immediately tells me I'm trying to download the wrong file. 
Dismiss that, click more once again. This time, I'm going to choose the SE build. It will detect it's the right version and it will install it. I hit enable and I now have the script extender for Skyrim Special Edition installed. Again, that simple. One thing that is worth mentioning for Skyrim Special Edition is if you manually download it from the browser and install it manually, I'm gonna do that now. When you drag the archive onto the drop files section and you go and check for SKSE, you're not going to find it. If you scroll down and look for test, you'll find it there. This is just a, a small problem with the metadata for this file. It's a, it's a little weird, but don't worry. As soon as you install, the, uh, the extension takes over, figures it all out, you hit enable, and you'll actually see it's been renamed to Skyrim Script Extender 64, and everything is pretty much set exactly as it should be. And again, this is only gonna be an issue if you download the file manually and drop it into Vortex rather than just doing the whole thing through Vortex. Another great thing about this extension is it will warn you if the script extender has been updated. If you go along to check for updates and click there now, it will actually include the script extender in its checking process. And if there is a new version, you will get a notification. Then all you need to do is click more, click download on the pop-up menu, and it will download and start installing this you just enable it and you now have the new version of the script extender. Now at the time of making this video, it doesn't automatically disable the old version. So you'll need to click where it says enable to disable it. And then you will see both script extenders get stacked and you can now switch between the different versions. This may have been fixed by the time you watch this video. And that's it. It really is that simple. In fact, it's so easy now, I'm beginning to feel a little redundant. However, I do have a few more videos I'd like to make before I retire from tutorial making. And of course, I would love it if you could join me for those. If you do, I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember as always, have fun.